Okay, now to talk about the Ottoman Empire. Uh, there are three leaders uh, at the time of Baha'u'llah who received letters from him. Uh, it was the Sultan, whose name was Abdul Aziz, and his two most important ministers, Fuad Pasha and Ali Pasha. Uh, Fuad Pasha was kind of like Secretary of State, and Ali Pasha was kind of like Prime Minister. I'll explain each letter individually. These three rulers were all involved in making life difficult for Baha'u'llah and his followers and his family during the 40 years they were there. All received letters from Baha'u'llah, all rejected the warnings, and all suffered tragic deaths. I'm going to divide this section into four parts. First, I'm going to talk, uh, give a short history of uh, Sultan Abdul Aziz and the Ottoman Empire. I'll then go on to uh, quote excerpts and explanations from each of the letters of Baha'u'llah. I will move on to the fate of each of the three leaders. And four is very important. It's about the impact of the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Okay. Abdul Aziz was Sultan of the Ottoman Empire from 1853 until his death in 1876. The Ottoman Empire was the largest empire of the world and the seat of Sunni Islam. The Sultan was also the Caliph, which is similar to the Pope for Sunni Islam. The Ottomans came to the area, grew in strength, and conquered Byzantine in 1453. The Ottoman dynasty continued to acquire land until it ruled over most of Sunni Islam, from southern Spain to the borders of Persia. I have a map right here. Baha'u'llah spent 40 years in the Ottoman Empire until his death in 1892. I also have a map of the travels of Baha'u'llah during that period. As you can see on the map, the Ottoman Empire was huge. Even those countries in Eastern Europe, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Albania, Czechoslovakia, all the way to Austria, those countries were at one time part of the Ottoman Empire. Although most of them never really became Muslims, some did. From the beginning of the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire made feeble attempts at keeping up with Europe, but the corruption was so rampant that progress became slow. They built some trains and tried to adopt a French system of laws, but was not very successful. Of course, building the army was the number one priority. The assassination of the Sultan and the loss of the war with Turkey in 1876 started the end of the Ottoman Empire. Okay, moving on to section two. We'll talk about the tablets that Baha'u'llah wrote to these uh, Ottoman rulers and how their luxurious lives ended in tragedy as they rejected Baha'u'llah's warnings. Suri of Maluk. Suri is kind of like a letter or a tablet. So I'm going to quote Shoghi Effendi, who was the great-grandson of Baha'u'llah, of what he says about uh, this uh, Suri or tablet. Baha'u'llah, for the first time, directs his words collectively to the entire company of the monarchs of the East and West. It sets forth both the character of his mission and the standard of justice that must govern the exercise of their rule in this day of God. Here are some excerpts. Lay not aside the fear of God, O kings of the earth, and beware that ye transgress not the bounds which the Almighty hath fixed. Observe the injunctions laid upon you in his book, and take good heed not to overstep their limits. Here are five of the injunctions that Baha'u'llah included in the story of Maluk. The second one mentions the story of Ali. In other words, it refers to the story of Baha'u'llah. The fifth one is one of Baha'u'llah's versions of the Golden Rule. Be vigilant, that ye may not do injustice to anyone, be it to the extent of a grain of mustard seed. Tread ye the path of justice, for this, verily, is the straight path. Relate unto them, O servant, the story of Ali, when he came unto them with truth, bearing his glorious and weighty book, and holding in his hands a testimony and proof from God, and holy and blessed tokens from him. Ye, however, O kings, have failed to heed the remembrance of God in his days, and to be guided by the lights which arose and shone forth above the horizon of a resplendent heaven. Compose your differences and reduce your armaments, that the burden of your expenditures may be lightened, 
and that your minds and hearts may be tranquilized. Heal the dissensions that divide you, and ye will no longer be in need of any armaments except that and ye will no longer be in need of any armaments except what the protection of your cities and territories demandeth. Know ye that the poor are the trust of God in your midst. Watch that ye betray not his trust, that ye deal not unjustly with them, and that ye walk not in the ways of the treacherous. Lay not on any soul a load which ye would not wish to be laid upon you, and desire not for anyone the things ye would not desire for yourselves. This is my best counsel unto you, did ye but observe it. Bahá'u'lláh warns him of the consequences of not listening to his counsels. If ye pay no heed unto the counsels which, in peerless and unequivocal language, we have revealed in this tablet, divine chastisement shall assail you from every direction, and the sentence of his justice shall be pronounced against you. On that day ye shall have no power to resist him, and shall recognize your own impotence. Baha'u'llah also proclaims his revelation to Christians and questions their failure to recognize him. O kings of Christendom, heard ye not the saying of Jesus, the Spirit of God? I go away and come again unto you. Wherefore then did ye fail when he did come again unto you in the clouds of heaven to draw nigh unto him, that ye might behold his face and be of them that attained his presence? In another passage he saith, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. And yet behold how, when he did bring the truth, ye refused to turn your faces towards him, and persisted in disporting yourselves with your pastimes and fancies. Also he addresses the ambassadors and government officials who made decisions against Baha'u'llah and caused harm to Baha'u'llah's family. He says, O concourse of ministers of state, do ye believe in your hearts that we have come to divest you of your earthly possessions and vanities? Nay, by the one in whose hand is my soul, our intention hath been to make clear that we oppose not the commands of the sovereign, nor are we to be numbered with the rebellious. Know ye of a certainty that all the treasures of the earth, all the gold, the silver, and the rare and precious gems they contain, are in the sight of God, of his chosen ones and his loved ones, as worthless as a handful of clay. Okay, I'm going to stop here. This tablet is more than 50 pages long, and I want to get to the other tablets. 